kanisa likijua habari ya kuomba and particularly praying uh, spiritual warfare maombi ya kivita hakuna mtu ambaye anaweza baki nyuma kwa sababu uh, katika kupigana ndiko mkristo huji establish ndiko hujijenga praise the name of the lord na there are various things ambazo natamani kuzungumza kwa hivyo nitajaribu sana kutorudia yale ambao nilisema jana but basically yesterday tulisoma Ezra chapter 8 verse 21 to 23 ambapo nilisema kwamba maandiko inasema Ezra ali, alitangaza mfungo na maombi pale katika mto wa Hava na Biblia inasema uh, to pray for three things katika lile andiko lina mambo matatu number 1 uh, praying for ourselves. So ni vizuri kila mtu nina, nilikuwa najaribu kuelezea maeneo ambao tunapaswa kujua kupigania. Na one of the areas ni yourself. There are battles that will rage against you. There are enemies who will stand in your way. Na unapaswa ujifundishe kujipigania. Bwana asifiwe sana. Kwa sababu wakati vita vipo uh, usipojipigania pia unaweza kuta hata vile vitu vingine ugepigania you will never be able to fight for them. Number 2 Nekasema families e, na kila mtu ajifundishe familia yako inahitaji maombi Ma, maombi kadhaa uh, na jana nilieleza sehemu kadhaa za maombi nikasema kuna maombi ya kuiti, eh, kuitisha maombi yale ya kawaida tulisema kubariki chakula kushukuru Mungu ni maombi all of us are expected to pray that prayer praise the name of the lord number 2 nikasema kuna maombi ya nini ya provisions eh Na nini ingine? Na katika provision ni kasema mambo kadhaa. Unapaswa uitishe vile vitu unahitaji, vile vitu e, e, una, una, unajua viko katika maisha yako vime peano na mungu katika life yako. Now, I want to say something that is very important for you. E, wakati unaombea familia yako, ni muhimu kuombea familia yako hata kuhusu mahitaji yake. Buwana suwe sana. What does your family require? Pray for those things. Na please tuache kuassume ya kwamba kuna kitu Mungu atatupatia bila kuomba. Are you sure to say this? Prayer is a principle. And the principles do not change and they do not care who you are. Maombi ni kanuni na haibadiliki na haibagui. Haitaki kujua wewe ni nani. So concerning prayer, Yesu akafundisha akasema Matthew 7 verse 7, ombeni nanyi mtapewa. So in other words, if you read in reverse tukasema Musipoomba? Come on. Ikiwa tukiomba tutapewa. Tusipoomba? Hatutapewa. Kwa hivyo mtu wajifudishi ya kwamba. Mahitaji ya familia yako. Wengine hata hii mtoto unaona umeshika fast bone ambaye ni kunyonya na nyonya. Pray about his education. Pray about the destiny ambao atakwenda. Because that's how you start to build. Praise the name of the Lord. Itisha pesa za shule. Itisha karo hata kama ujanza kulipa hata shiringi moja. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kuna watu wengi hawana. Biblia inasema hivyo. Kwa sababu hawakufanya nini? Hawakuomba. Sio mimi ninasema ni Biblia. You don't have because you didn't. You didn't ask. So yeyote ambaye haombi, kuna vitu ambavyo utatamani huko bele. Na uli, ulikuwa na nafasi ya kuomba sasa, haukuomba. Ulikuwa na nafasi ya kuzungumzia Mungu bila mambo mengi, lakini haukuomba. Jina na Bwana libarikiwe. Msichana omba sasa kuhusu maisha yako ya bereni. Huu wakati ya una mtoto anakuliria, omba vile utakuwa. Omba wakati kutakuwa na mambo. Omba katika maisha yako kule mbele. Because right now you have the time, you have the grace. Lakini utafika mahali, njoroge analia hapa, na wailimu anaitisha mukata pade hii. Amen. Ndiyo unajikuta mahali ya bapo, hushikanishi, neto wakaigi vizuri haishiki. Sasa unakuta mtu anafika mahali anasema, ui, nye jelega kuhoyo last week but one. Nilio barast wiki batuwa. Nilio barast month. Na si kupenda hapendi maombi. Ni situation vile zilivyo. Praise the name of the Lord. I, I'll never forget when uh, I came to full time ministry. We had a lot of time. I didn't have responsibilities kama zile nikonazo. Uh, right now I oversee some churches. They are pastors under me. 
they have to hear my word. They have to know what I am doing. Some of them will tell me their problems. Nina washirika ambao ni wengi. Nina mtu katikatie nuambaye saingini. Anasikia, oh, Reverend Anaiza nisaidia. So, unanipigia simu. Najikuta ya kwamba, there are times I would like to pray. But I am disrupted by programs. Are we together? But there are times nilikuwa natoka tu hivi nikimaliza chai kwa mulima. Nimeanzana na maombi. Maana kwanza nilikuwa naishi mahali kuna kamulima furani hapo. Naenda kuomba. Naomba, naomba, naomba. But today, that time ya kuenda kwa mulima, ni unabidi ujipange. Upange, upange, mpaka yingie. Bwana suwe sana. My friend, kuna maombi unapaswa kuomba sasa. And it is never too early to pray. Can I say this? It is never too early to, to pray. Si mapema sana kuomba. Si mapema kuombea mambo ambao yuko mwisho. Si mapema hata kuomba siku ile Mungu nitakufa uwasaidia watu. Wasinililia juu nitakuwa mahali pazuri. Na ukufi kesho ati kwa sau ya kuomba hivyo. Ni maombi umepanda mbegu itafika siku hiyo. Kwani unafikiri utaishi dunia kama mawe? Haleluya. Hata mawe uhusiano inakuwa kokoto. <laughs> kwa hivyo inaacha kuwa kimawe, inakuwa tumawe. So please my friend, nina najaribu kusema unaweza obea mambo mengi. I remember, let me give this testimony. Nilisoma habari ya pastor moja ambaye eh, alikuwa anaongea habari ya maombi. Kitabu chake kinaongea habari ya maombi in depth. Na alikuwa anasema habari ya maombi ambao aliom, eh, ali, alipatana na baba yake mkwe. Akamwambia habari ya maombi aliomba. So this is the story. This guy ako college wanakutana msichana college yao ilikuwa na department tofauti wakakutana msichana fulani moyo wake ukampenda lakini alipoangalia kidole cha katikati akaona kuna pete akajua kuna mwenyewe so huyu ni booked lakini moyo wake unapenda ule msichana so na akajua wa, kuna urafiki na fulani na kwa hivyo moyo wake ukafika mahali akasema okay inaonekana huyu na mimi hatuwezi patana na kwa sababu alikuwa ndugu ameokoka hakuomba kinyume hakusema kitu akaamini huyo si wake lakini baada ya kukaa kitu kama miezi miwili yu, siku moja wanatoka mission aka akapea yule msichana lift okay that's in america you know the culture so wewe usiende kufanya hiyo praise god eh huyo ni america so akabeba msichana wanarudi shule na yeye alikuwa mtu discipline na msichana pia alikuwa ameokoka so wakaanza kurudi shuleni wakiwa jiani msichana anakaa grume hivi anakaa kama kuna jambo linamsumbua aka a, a, dakika moja akafika mahali akamwambia you know what imagine fulani amenitupa amesema hatuwezi perekana ndugu moyo wake ukasema haleluya lakini mdomo ukasema i am very sorry Moyo una celebrate mdomo unaomboleza na msichana. So baada ya kwenda akamupebe akamuongeza unajua wale watu ni very emotional. Msichana amelia machozi anamwambia usilie. Mungu atakusaidia. Unajua hata Mungu anaweza kuarudisha pamoja ama akupe mtu mwingine hazemi akupe mimi, you know. But eventually to cut a long story short e, walienda wakafika. Na baada ya mwezi mmoja akaona wale watu warudiani akaenda kwa msichana akamwambia you know what i love you i would like to marry you msichana akamwambia what hukumbuki nilikuwa na rafiki akamwambia wewe usijali wewe mimi nakupenda kama ukinikubali nitakuoa msichana akakaa akamwambia acha nifikiria akamwambia ni sawa nitakuoa so msichana akampeleka kwa baba yake ili am introduce boyfriend wake walipofika kwa baba yake eh, kuingia tu hivi msichana akaambia dad this is my boyfriend so akaanza kuongea mama na msichana wakaenda kijana wakabaki na mzee wanaongea pale akamuuliza unafanya kazi gani kijana akamwambia e, mimi ninasoma e, shule ya theolojia nataka kuwa pasta mzee akaita mama we mama fulani kuja bio kuja usikie maneno mama akakuja ni nini kuna nini akamwambia ebu umeniambia unasomea nini nasoma ni kuwe pasta akasema sikia maombi yamejibiwa akainua mikono akaanza kushukuru kijana anachanganyikiwa maombi hii ambayo imejibiwa sielewi imeombwa aje ndio akawauliza ebu nieleze hii maombi imejibiwa ilijibiwa lini akamwambia kijana mimi na mamako sasa tulikaa miaka mingi bila mtoto akishika mimba inatoka akishika ingine inatoka na tukafika mahali tukaomba maombi 
Tukamwambia Mungu ukikubali utupe mtoto, ukitupea kijana awe pasta. Ukitupea msichana aolewe na pasta na wewe ni pasta umekuja. Maombi imejibiwa maijajibiwa. Na imeobewa mtu hajaingia kwa tubo. Jina la Bwana libarikiwe. Salimia jirani yako mwambie it is never too early to pray. Amen. Prayer is an investment. Hallelujah. Kuna majitu unaweza agusha ya, ya 2022 unaiagusia hapa kwa maombi lakini shida ni kwamba ni kwa bio omba mambo ina haihukuhusu sasa hivi ah unawasema pastor there is time tutaombea hiyo mambo na kwa hiyo mambo tutapambana naye ngoja ifike 2022 majitu ni kumi. unasimama hapo unasema sasa ni kudiru na goliath ama ni brother ya goliath nani nitaua kwanza lakini ulikuwa na time ugeagusha majitu and i want to tell you this the physical realm has the the, what we call the numbers. The physical realm has the time limitations that are numbered. Praise the name of the Lord. The spiritual realm has no limitation. It is not limited. The spiritual realm is one. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The physical realm has the times and the seasons. But the spiritual realm has no time, has no season. So ukijifundisha hilo jambo ni kusema nikiwa hapa I can also enter 2022 in my prayer. Pray about that year. Pray about what going to happen. But the problem is the church understanding. Hiyo jambo ya kiroho ya kwamba the spiritual realm is one. It doesn't have time limitations. So where when physically do you utafika 2022? Lakini even now, you stand in 2022, you can get into that season. Now, I don't have time to go into that. But mungu atusaidie to wherever hili jambo. Investment in prayer is never too early. Praise the name of the Lord. I can only say prayer, actually what you are praying for, you are, you are already late. You are supposed to pray for it many years ago. Amen. Vitu zigine unakubana nazo hapa, vita zigine unapigana nazo. Ulipaswa kuomba miaka kumi, watangu uokoke hiyo miaka kumi. Ndiyo unapaswa kuwa umeombea. Jina na buwana libarikiwe. Now we will talk about a few things. So, uh, ni kuwa nasema provisions za familia yako unaweza waitishia, vitu zile unaitaji. Now, the other thing you need to do is to fight for that family. Fighting the spiritual problems within the family, kuomba kuhusu mambo mengine, watoto wako hata kama... Hapa nasema huyu mtoto kama yule amesikwa pale ati kwamba eh, ikifika akiwa mkubwa ndio utaanza kuobea yeye asikunywe madawa ya kulevia asivute bangi asifanye nini omba sasa wengine unajua ile nyumba umetoka ni ya ulevi katia watoto ulevi wakati wananyonya watabirie wanene waombe praise the name of the lord Chida haza weo unangoje wakati kijana inaenda form 4. Ndiyo unanza kumuogeresha abali ya pobe. Na hata siku omba ni kumuogeresha. Na, na wegine siku uogeresha ni kupigia kerele. Dede ono hana mule uwe. He. Unaona. Ugoe vile unaka. Mina ona uwe unaheza kunyo. Unaona. Sasa. Iyo ni nini unafanya. Wasting your time. You had 17 years of prayer. Which you never did. Shake your neighbor mwambia. Utilize your time in prayer. Galia mwingine mwambie sasa ndiyo wakati wa kuomba na kuomba na kuomba. Amen. 17 years kabla kijana hajafikiri kuvuta bagi na kukunywa madawa. Omba. Disconnect ile maroho. Lakini sasa sisi tunajiangalia mtoto wakati kama msichana kameanza kutoka hapo nje na kusalimiwa na na, na kajoni ndio unaanza makerere. You had all the time to pray. You had all the time to talk. You never did. Eh hey, na na kwa bia anga utaletewa tu rasa hapo. Na anakuja na kuambia madhe. Akiata kuangalia vizuri ana. Jo amevuta. <laughs> Kuwekea mkono. Unasikia kichwa ikienda opposite. Unaanza kusema hii ni shetani. Si shetani, ulimpatia shetani miaka mingi nafasi. The Bible says Job would rise every morning and pray for his family. Early in the morning. He was not waiting for the evening. But early in the morning. Na hakuna siku wa yubu walisema watoto hawa ni wazima wajipange. Aliwapanga. Glory be to God. Na naona yu inawatia wasi wasi wacha tu wachana nae. Mume waste time. Kuna muibaji mmoja walisema si kunyingi. Nilizi tupa zingerudi. Siku zile 
Ninge mpa mokozi wangu Ninge mtumikia Ukisikia akisema siku nyingi zilizopita nilitupa Kama ningejua Ninge mpea buwana wakati huo Kama ningejua Ningeomba hiyo miaka Sasa siku jua Niliangalia watoto Mutu wamefikisha meno that tu Dio najaribu kuleta hapa kwa madhabahu Madaku iladu wakini moko utagawira Utatua sadaka begu, fugu, nini, ukirenga mutu Na ulikuwa na nafasi ya kufanya hivyo Praise the name of the Lord Hallelujah Kwani ni miongea kitu muzito? Now let me recommend some actions ambazo ni getamani watu wa shike. Kuna kitu katika eh, spiritual realm. Inaitua the, the, now what do I call it? The times and the seasons that are set by God. Praise the name of the Lord. Na ambazo katika ulimwengu wa kiroho ureflect. Kwa mfano ni getaka mshike, kuna majira na nyakati za kupeleka watoto kwa mungu. Are we together? One is immediately the child is born. Wacha na, na kuna wakati nilifudisha hilo jambo hapa. Immediately the child is born. Wacha kuka, wacha kuweka mtoto mpaka a, 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 anajua kuogea. Dio unapereka kwa kanisa, unasema, hey, doeli unekarane ne hile. Kamekua kakubwa. Mutoto wa shaa shika maroho, wa shaa shika ulimwengu, dio unaleta kwa mungu. Lakini ulikuwa na time. Wewe wende uangalia katika bibiria mtoto aliperekwa. Kijana aliperekwa siku ya ngapi? Ya nane. Mutoto hata kama ni musichana, kama ni kifungua mimba, kama alikuwa naitaji sadaka zile zinatolewa. Siku zikipita analetwa, anatolewa sadaka zile anatolewa. Praise the name of the Lord. So at ba, ba, after birth, mutoto anapaswa kuombewa. Number two, age three, miaka mitatu. Miaka mitatu diyo mutu ameacha kunyonya. Iyo diyo umre umuri unasikia Samueli aliperekwa kwa hekaru. Uyo mtu anaezaabiwa yada ukojoe huko, wacha kukojoa hapa. Hameanda kushika akiri. Hameanda kushika maere, ma, eh, maelezo ya maisha. So that's the time ambao unapaswa kujifutu. Na nawafudisha hii kwa sababu this is a strategy of spiritual warfare. Fighting for your children. Take them to the altar. Mia katatu ikifika, pereka ye. Seven years is another junction. Pereka ye kwa madhabahu. Wa, na muache kuangalia hii mambo kama tumambo tudogo. Hii kuku diko kanisa ilipotezea kila kitu. Mana sisi ni wakiro na neema. We are just trusting in the grace of God. Oh, hallelujah. God is merciful. You are merciful. Enda uangalia walimwengu wanao jua. Ulimwengu vile ufanya kazi. Usikize ma story. Dio utairewa. Sisi ni wajinga. Wao ni werevu. Mambo ya kiroho. Miaka saba ikifika pereka mtoto kwa madhabahu. Mudedicate kwa mungu. Miaka saba diyo wakati mutu hufika age of reasoning. Miaka tatu it is the age of learning. Number seven is the time of reasoning. Mutu wameanda kushika mazuri mabaya. Kire kina sahiri kufanywa, kisicho sahiri kufanywa. Age twelve pereka ye kwa madhabahu. At twelve. Why? That is the age, muna soma vizuri kwa bibiria, Yesu alienda akawachwa hekaruni, akawa na hekima iliotisha watu wegine. That is the age of wisdom. Wakati hekima huanda kujengeka. Remember there is understanding and there is wisdom. Wisdom huanzia katika miaka kumina miwiri. Dio knowledge ya, ya mambo ufahamu mzuri unatokea. From there, you will wait until the age 17 to 18. Unapereka mtoto tena. Unampereka sasa hile, diyo hapo unamutegenezea barabara ya ulimwengu wake. The other thing I would like you to note, katika miaka kuminanane, all, all this time you are taking the child to the altar, eh, you are supposed to speak a word, unene neno. Unampereka mtoto na sadaka. Na sadaka siyo razima iwe erufu miyamoja, erufu ishirini, inaweza kuwa kile umebarikiwa nacho na mungu, umfikishe kwa mungu. Are we together? Na kuna matiching zimekuja hivi karibuni ambazo zinapinga habari ya matoreo, habari ya watu kupeana, oh yesu walijitorea, wakati mtu wanatoa, ni kusema haamini sacrifice ya yesu. Yesu kwa sababu yedi alikuwa sacrifice. Kwa nini alitorewa sacrifice? Alipofika kwa madhabahu, umesoma katika ruka. Aliperekwa na sadaka zinazo kubarika. Kwa hivyo alie sadaka badu aliperekwa na sadaka. It's a principle. Praise the name of the Lord. So I don't want to go into those details. Lakini, unaenda, unanena. 
katika miaka kumi na nane uwerewe hapo ndipo mzazi na mtoto usually huanza kutengana ile ya milele kutengana ya milele ni kusema mtoto atachukua barabara ya maisha yake peke yake ni mtu mzima atapata kitabulisho atajiamulia raifu yake kule inakwenda at that juncture kama hizi tatu za kwanza zilikuruka hauna njia ya kurekebisha kitu zone by the grace of god if something will happen because you had the time na hiyo ndio period nitakwambia my interval hizo nimekupea ndio miaka ya kuomba mwaka wa kuzaliwa hadi kufikisha miaka tatu. ombea mtu ya kwamba bwana msaidie mu disconnect na family yao mutoe katika nyumba yao ukifika katika miaka tatu, learning ombea habari ya akili kufunguka ombea mtoto kushika mambo yanayostahili ombea yeye asipate hekima ya dunia itakayo muongoza katika mabaya ashike hekima ya Mungu itakayo mpeleka katika mema praise the name of the lord naona wasichana wanashidwa ni ya nini hii tunaabiwa chao hawana mtoto wewe shukuru Mungu unasikia ukiwa hivyo mimi nikiwa muhubiri mambo mengine nimejua watoto wangu wengine wakiwa watu wazima ndio ninaelewa i had a season i had a time but i never did Praise the name of the Lord. So ombea mtoto at from age 3 from age 7 unamuombea understanding. Ufahamu wake that God there will be understanding knowledge yani ile unaanza kupata hekima kubaini mabaya mazuri asaidiwe. At age 12 kwenda bere mpaka 17 unaombea mtoto kupata the wisdom ile ambayo inahitajika katika life. Wisdom ya kuishi kujua wasichana wazuri wasichana wabaya wanaume wale ambao wanataka mtu na pesa wanawake ambao wanataka mtu na mili yao umuombe hekima hiyo uombe ya kwamba akikutana na wale wanauza bangi hata nunua atawajua atajitenga and that is why i'm saying this is warfare praise the name of the lord you cannot leave the, your, your family for the sake of it mungu atasaidia huyu mtoto ulimleta kwa madhabahu mara moja haitoshi ombea yeye fuatilia katika jina la Yesu Bwana asifiwe sana Sasa nimekwama mahali pa jana lakini hiyo information nimekusaidia So at age 25 dio age ile naweza sema ya kwamba ya mwisho na this one can be done between age 20, 23 to 25 mtu yule ni mzima sasa amefika mahali ambapo anaweza oa anaweza olewa na muache uoga ita kijana weka yeye hapo pika chakula mkimaliza kukura mwambie kuja mwanangu Omba ya kwamba Mungu huyu mtu amefika mahali sasa anaweza oa muache aibu huyu mtu ataoa tu ama utaletewa kasire queen hapo utaona maajabu made <laughs> unasema <laughs> unajaribu kusema ate lakini umeletewa kwa sababu haukuomba haukusema chochote na wakati umefika wake wa kuoa lakini wewe ni muoga Unasema unajua si mimi nitamchagulia chagua kwa maombi praise the name of the lord Sema Bwana naomba kama uakitoka hivi fuga maso wakati mtu mbaya anapita fugua wakati mzuri anapita Kwani maombi ni hasara utaenda hebu tigiza neighbor muulize ni hasara gani utapata ukioba maombi hiyo e, na umwambie kama kuna hasara nitalipa hiyo <laughs> e, hiyo hasara ataenda akiomba Omba kwamba msichana akitoka asidanganywe na wale vijana ambao wanataka kutumia mtu, kutumia mwili. Eh, anatumia mwili wako, ana utumia akijua amemalizana na wewe, anaenda to the next one. Anaendea mujiga mwingine. Anaanza na mujiga mwingine, anapeleka mpaka mwisho anajua hata ameshika mimba ametoa tatu. Anawacha na ye akiwa ameharibu kabisa omba msichana wako muombe akifika miaka 23 hapo omba ya kwamba Mungu muite mara nyingi mpe chakula mwambie mwanangu tumekura wacha tuombe tushikane Mungu saidia msichana wangu akitoka asionwe na na mafisi nasikia wakitoa mafisi unajua hata mimi husoma kwa magazeti amen asionwe na nini na mafisi na mabufaru aonwe na mtu Mtu abaya na akili, mtu abaya atamleta mnyubani, mtu abaya atampeleka kwa wazazi wake. Naomba apate mtu kama Joseph, abaya hata kama atashika mimba. Joseph of understanding, haleluya. Sasa wewe haumuobei. Ndio kanaenda kanarudi. Kwambia mam, imagine amenitoa kama kofi ine. <laughs> na wewe ile mzuri unaweza fanya ni kuambia unaona ngothogwa huraga. Baba yako alikuwa ananitwaga hivyo. 
Hauku disconnect msichana. At the right time, at the right at the prime of life. Praise the name of the Lord. Kuna mtu anasaidika. Mungu awabariki. Na hiyo hiyo age nimewapea muifuatilie. Ni muhimu sana. Wewe msichana umeokoka ukiwa hujafika hiyo miaka na pengine mzazi hana hiyo understanding. Unaweza jireta kwa madhabahu. Abia mtumishi niombe kuhusu maisha yangu ya kuolewa. Na muache aibu wasichana. Lakini kama utai kuolewa wewe umeitwa na mwito kama ya Paulo, sawa usilete mwili hapa. Ka. Lakini kama umeitwa na mwito unasikia ndani yako unaweza taka kuolewa. Tokea hata kwa ingine na ingine. Kai kwa hadhara ogothie. Eh na ukitokea hapa hapa naambia muhubiri niko tu nahitaji. Ah asema nataka kuolewa. Oba. Amen. Na wewe muhubiri ukiabua uobe unaomba kabisa seriously. Na unatagaza na uba mume na washiria kwa jera. Mahali yamefugiwa. Release. Chukua aenda nyumbani. Amen. Wacha kamsichana kaolewe. <laughs> Kashukuru Mungu miaka yote. Praise the name of the Lord. So those are things ambazo I wish ningekuwa na jia ya kuelezea kwa udani vizuri. Are we together? So na hata wakati tumefika mtu ameshaolewa kuna ages ambazo you factor in when you are mature Kuna age ya dhate age ya dhate ndio mtu huingia katika destiny yake So in that is wale ambao hujagonga dhate omba Mungu kuhusu maisha yako Ukifika umri wa dhate 29 hapo unapaswa hata kama ni mlima uende Uombe Mungu ya kwamba my time to my destiny has come Give me the opening to my destiny. Lakini nawaambia hata mimi isipokuwa na sasa nina neema ninajua. Si miaka kadhaa ilipita tu nikiwa hapo. Nikiwa naangalia tu. Fote ikafika nikiangalia tu. Kwa sababu sina akili, sijui. Sasa we shukuru Mungu na kusaidia. Miaka kadhaa ikifika you have entered the time when destinies are shaped. It is a time to dedicate yourself to God. It is your time to stand in the house of God and say, Lord, help me to get into my destiny. Nisiende nianguke kwa mashimo. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Eh, from age 30 unakuja age ya 40 na ukifika miaka 40, it is the time of establishment katika life. Kwa hivyo ukianza kupita miaka 35 umeanza kuingia katika miaka ile mtu huwa established. Are we together? Miaka ile mtu upata mizizi na hujipanda katika maisha. Praise the name of the Lord. So at that time 40 na, na let me say this. 40 you are at your prime. If there is anything you never did, you should do it between 40 and 50. If you miss that occasion, uko mbele utangangana. Na watu wanaweza kuwabia wengine wako hapa. Kujaribu kujenga nyumba ukiwa 55. Wana vile unajenga lakini moyo uko na maswali. Sema leo dira kalilia gold. Najenga wakati nimezeeka. Yaani unasikia okay umejenga lakini utakaa kama wengine ambao Biblia inasema ya kwamba misingi ya hekalu ilipowekwa wengine walicheka, wengine walifurahi na wengine ni kulia walikuwa wanalia. Sasa Biblia inasema haungejua kilio na furaha zinapitana wapi? Ni katika kitabu cha Nehemia na Ezra wameandika hizo story. Watu waliomboleza. I, I believe that it, this should be in Ezra. No, in, in Nehemiah, sorry. Praise the name of the Lord. Ndiye anaeleza vizuri walilia. Mahali anasema ya kwamba the joy of the Lord is, is my strength. Is it chapter 10 verse 27? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Aliwaambia hivyo kwa sababu walikuwa wanalia. There is nothing to celebrate. Wale walikuwa wameona the glory. Unasema nyumba nimejenga. Sasa niko 55. Kwa hiyo God ameika kwa roho miaka 20. Unafanya hesabu mpaka mtu mwingine wale wana wanakula chapo huko wakilalua nyama kwa ya kufugua nyumba house warming ndio unaona wanafurahia. Wewe unakaa kama ni nyumba ni, ni kama uko mgeni huko. Ginyoka kegeara. Una, na ni nyumba yako ni wewe umejenga na pesa yako lakini wakati umeijenga it is not at your prime praise the name of the lord so there is a time of establishment between 40 to 50 55 there ile wakati unaona government inasema you retire isipokuwa sasa hizo wameongeza miaka wakaweka ingine tano ya kusubua mtu praise the name of the lord ukifika 55 enda nyumbani enda ukafanye shughuli zingine eh tuachana na hiyo mambo kuna mtu anasema pastor niache pesa Kaa kwa pesa. 
E, tulikuwa tumesema uombe family, uombe pia nini? Upiganie family, upiganie resources. Resources is an area ambayo inahitaji vita. Na sasa e, sina muda wa kueleza zaidi. E, number 4 tuliongea habari ya geographical locations. Zinahitaji kuombewa na kupiganiwa. Praise the name of the Lord. Where do you come from? What kind of people live there? What kind of uh, behavior is in your locality? Ni kitu gani kiko pale? Kuna mambo huitaji kupiganiwa katika lile eneo. And finally number 5 I talked about praying or uh, fighting for leaders. Bwana asifiwe sana. Now uh, nataka tuingie katika eneo ambalo nitasoma msali mmoja kidogo and then we shall get into another dimension ambao nataka sasa kuanza kudiru na maeneo ya kivita ambao tunapaswa kupigana na understanding. Let's go back to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. And uh, sijui nilikuwa naangalia mistari iliyo hapo juu kutoka verse 1 mpaka verse, verse 9. Inaongea habari ya watu vile wanapaswa kuishi. I want to say this. Spiritual warfare is very uh, 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 much connected to your lifestyle. Spiritual warfare is much connected to your lifestyle. Unaishi maisha gani? There is a life unaweza kuwa unaishi. You would want to overcome the kingdom of the devil, but your character will bring you down. Tabia ile umejiwekea. Shetani ndio atatumia kukuzuia kumushinda. Uwezi kuwa mtu wa makelele, mtu wa matukano, alafu unataka kuambia shetani aondoke. Ni lazima ujifundishe, uelewe vile unapigana. Jina la Bwana libarikiwe. Umevaa nini? Ukitazama katika lile neno ambalo tunasoma, e, inasema habari ya kwamba uh, verse 10. Hatimaye muzidi kuwa hodari katika Bwana na katika uwezo wa nguvu zake. Kuna kitu ambao sijui kama nitaweza kuwa kuambia e, e, baadaye, lakini ningetaka kusema hivi, mtu yote ambaye anapigana vita vya kiroho, number 1, rely on God. Umutegemee Bwana. Si guvu zako zina shida shetani. Hili jambo linakuambia mambo mawili. Relationship yako na Mungu must be right before you begin to fight. Amen. Hapana kuwa mtu unalala kwa wenyewe, unaamkia kwa wenyewe na unataka kufukuza pepo. Wapi? Azita kwenda. Uliza wana wa Skefa ambao walijaribu kuzifukuza. Ziliwaambia <laughs> Yesu tunamjua vizuri. Paulo tunamuelewa, nyinyi hatuna record yenu hapa. Kuhusu kufukuzwa, nyinyi amwezi kutufukuza. Maisha yenu haiko sawa. You have no spiritual identity when it comes to warfare. And your spiritual identity in warfare is your character, your lifestyle. Unaishi maisha gani? Uwezi kushidana na mapepo ya uzinzi, tunafunga mapepo hapa tunakemea. Na wewe ni muzinzi ni mmoja wao. Hawezi aziwezi kwenda. Zita kushambulia instead. Praise the name of the Lord. Uwezi kuwa mtu ambaye kinywa chako kifunguka chanena matusi lakini wanataka kuambia pepo zitoke. Hazita toka. Sifanya kama wengine ambao mahalipa moja walienda kufukuza pepo. Alafu wamefunga macho. Na mwodu waki igatako mamuti ya kuhigaa maitho. Mwana sifuwe sana. Pana fuga macho. Fugua macho. Pepo unafuga macho. Kwa ni... Sasi kuoba unaomba hii ni kukemea. Kemea vizuri. Fugua macho uone. Unaezaona mariaksha. Hala dugu wamefuga macho pepo. Na, na, na yuli anatolewa. Ana ya. Sisa hawaoni. Hawajui vile kunaendelea. Lakini, ok, sija wambia, alikuwa ndugu mzuri, hata hasa ndugu mzuri. Lakini kulikuwa na kasoro katika hile timu walikuwa nae. So pepo haziwezi yenda. Haya, ndugu mwingine na fikiangu walikuwa na niambia, meenda town moja katika hii nation ya Kenya. Hakaenda katika hiyo town. E, ibada imeendelea saa hile wanamaliza. Mweda wazimu wameigia kwa nyumba na hana kitu. Hako na suti ya Adam. Ndiye huyo. Sasa watu wengine sini kutoka wanatoka. Wachugaji wakaachwa. Ah, kasema wachugaji tuombe. Sasa na shida, wachugaji wale wote ni wanaume wakopali. Na huyu ni dada. Hata ashas walienda. Because mkutano ushaisha. Alafu wakovaya ore ntikiasi. So sasa wakanzana na pepo. Wananzana. Na, na unajua kama hapo crowd mentality. Tuko wengi. Hallelujah. So wachugaji wameshamuka kuchemuka na mnagani. Sasa sahiri anatoa pepo, <laughs> enauliza, haya, <laughs> hata wewe furani. Wewe ni wakutufukuza. Na situlikuwa na wewe juzi, mahali furani furani, ukafanya one, two, three, uyu anatoka. Aki, anatoka, hakuwa ambia, walikuwa wanaenda wakisema, utatoka hata ukiogea, utatoka. Hakini anaenda. Pepo 
Hapo sinajaribu kutawaza nasema eh hata kwanza anachaka anasema guy wewe naye fulani. <laughs> Ila jumba tulikuwa na wewe ulitoka saa ngapi by the way? Huyo naye anachomoka. Muhubiri aliniambia aliachwa peke yake. Sasa hiyo ingine sitawapea. Bwana asifiwe sana. Lakini pepo zilienda. Alipoachwa peke yake. Lakini sasa jiulize unafukuza pepo na umelala kwa malaya. Uitakwenda jai haiwezekani lifestyle character itaamua kama utaweza kudiru na mapepo ndio maana hapo juu inasema habari ya watoto vile mtakana na wazazi wazazi vile mtakana na watoto waume vile mtakana na wake wake watakana namna gani na waume zao na watoto wao na wafanyikazi watakana namna gani katika mahali u, wanafanya kazi so hata vile unakaa una behave kazini kuchukua chukua tu pesa kukura Umeajiriwa kwa hoteli, umeweka sabusa kwa mdomo imeishia hapo. Paka unasema <laughs> Mdoza nafikia ni kufurahi ni samosa vile iko moto kwa mdomo. Alafu hapa ndio wewe huyo in the name of eh hey, Jesus kitu gani? Shetani inakuangalia ina, inakuuliza sabusa ulimaliza. <laughs> Na ulimeza saa ngapi? Nilikuacha umeweka kwa mdomo. So haiwezi kwenda inaangalia character inasema si yeye popote. Salimia jirani mwambie chunga character kama unataka kupigana. Na muende muangalie ya Waefeso 6 habari ya the armor, the armor kutoka verse 10. Maana sita soma hiyo mistari. The armor muangalie muone inaongea sana habari ya maisha ya mtu. Bwana asifiwe sana. Can we give our offerings in the presence of God as we continue with the word? Father we thank you for our offerings. Biblia inasema mtu asije kwako mikono mitupu. Nasi tumebeba sadaka zetu ambazo twatoa mbele zako. E Bwana twaomba zikubalike machoni pako katika jina la Baba la Mwana Roho Mtakatifu tuomba na kuamini. Amen. Bwana asifiwe sana. The armor of God kwa sababu jabura pili katika vita vya kiroho ni put on the armor. Amen. Rely on God number 2. Put on the armor. Vav siraha za kivita. Na siraha unavalia wapi? Ukiangalia the belt of truth. Mushipi ya bao ni kweli. Mushipi ya bao ni kweli. Sio ni kusema ya kwamba ni mutu kuwa mkweli. Eh? The truth ina maanisha you be true. You don't live a double life. Na unataa kupigana na shetani. Mutu wabaya na kuona kanisani, anaona dada. Bwana sifiwe, haleluya. Hii, ni meokoka. Naenda biguni, mpaka unajirefusha kuwanyesha vila, unaenda biguni. Ni kupanda, unapanda, siku telemuka, naenda biguni. Kwa jia ya kuamini, na kutubu, na kunyenyekea. Ni meamua kama Ibrahimu, ni tafuata. Kama inoko, sisi mamishui. Kama jakuhu, ni tamenyana nae. Unatupea baibu muzima. Lakini ngoja utoke pare. Wale unafanya biyashara na wadio wanakujua. Vile wewe ni mukali, ni sumu. Unakaa kama ukona meno hile ya nyoka. Ikiuma mutu, amekwisha. Lakini kwa kanisa, ndiyo wewe uko hapa ni wewe bwana ni wewe peke yako. Hakuna mwingine. Iyo, wewe si mukweli. Maisha yako ya kanisani na ya kazini ni tafauti. Hawezi pigana. Nitakupea tu example igine moja. Nisema hivi, eh, Kitu kigine ambacho unapaswa kujifutia ni kujua ukweli. So you be true and you also know the truth. The truth is a word. Now, eh, ya pili siraha ya pili ni the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness ni, kus, ni kutenda kilicho haki. Kutenda kilicho haki ni kusema hata wakati tunadiru na wewe. Hata wakati umekosewa. Unafanya jambo lidiro haki. You don't just misbehave. Just because at, you are offended. Praise the name of the Lord. Eh? Hivyo hivyo ulinifanyia ni sawa tutaonana na wewe una, unarenga yako unafanya kitu so mumefanyana huyu amekufanya na wewe umemfanyia huyu amekutenda ukamtendea alafu unasimama mbele za Bwana ku ama unasimama mbele ya mashetani kuifunga hautaiweza character yako iko na flow iko na kasoro praise the name of the lord eh, helmet helmet ni nini ni wokovu wokovu ni kusema namna gani minding about Living like a born again. Uishi kama mutu waliye okoka. Kaa kama mutu amjuwae mungu. Tembea kama mutu wanaejua mungu. You don't need a supervisor in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. Mahali unafanyia kazi. You don't need a supervisor. Like now, let me tell you this. If, even if there was no pastor here, Pastor Daniel was not here, the apostle and the reverend were not here, I would not change my preaching because of them. Because they are not here. Because I don't need a supervisor. I need to be under the supervision of God. 
That is righteousness. Hallelujah. Sio ati kwamba kwa sababu apostle hayuko sasa ninajua hayuko. Sasa ninawalenga ninawaitisha sadaka hapa. Na ninasema iwekelewe hapa. Weka katika tia Biblia. Weka. Weka weka. Harafu unafunga ka Bible unafunga na nyororo. Umeenda. Wewe ni mukora. Wewe hauta kuwa na nafasi. Jina na buwana libarikiwe. Na kuna jambo nimekuwa nikiambiwa watu. Mimi ni na uhakika ni tahubiri miaka mingi. Na hakuna maali ziwezi kuenda. Kwa sababu ya kitu kimoja. I mind my lifestyle. I mind my salvation. I don't need the pastor to be there for me to do what is right. I preach what is right. Amen. Na hata kule nimewahi kwenda unafanyiwa madharau. Uwezi fanya madharau, wewe si wa madharau, wewe ni mtu tofauti. You don't misbehave. Ati kwa sababu walikupea giribiri wameweka kwa bahasa na wakaifuga na walikupea ukiwa kwa gari na wewe unasema ngoja nitarudi huko. Nitawaonyesha. Unamwambia nipagie igini na wewe unapanga, unapanga vile utanyorosha yeye. Unanyorosha washirika, unanyoa manyoya na unatoa ngozi. Unaenda naye. Na unamwambia Mungu amesema hiyo sadaka isiguzwe hata isifuguliwe ikiwa elia hii. Ifuguliwe baada ya kupada kinogi. Hiyo ni kusema ni wewe utaenda na kwa maana huyu aende kupanda kinogi bwana asiwe sana. Yaani una mikio umefanya na ni hasira ume hiyo hiyo ni kukosa righteousness. Nao Mungu atawasaidia. Nao leo nataka kuongea habari ya kitu kimoja ambacho kwa sababu tunaongea habari ya vita katika maombi praise the name of the lord vita katika maombi let's turn to the book of numbers na nitawatajia tu maandiko kwa sababu kuna areas ambazo ningetaka muangalie katika life zenu na katika kuhusu kwa nini mtu anapaswa kuomba maombi ya vita akiwa serious Uwaje kuomba kana kwamba ni sisi unasaidia. You know there are people even who, who think katika hii kupigana ni, ni mtu anasaidia, ni muhubiri anasaidia. Ah ah, niliwaambia there is a battle we should fight for ourselves, for our families, for our geographical areas, for our resources, for the church also, for the nation there requires prayer. Are we together? But ni kuambia ya kwamba vita vya rohoni ni wewe unasaidika wakati unajifundisha kupigana. Sueleweni leo nataka kuongelesha habari ya strategies ambazo shetani hutumia kupigana na Wakristo na ni nini Wakristo wanapaswa kufanya Number one. in numbers 22 if you read from verse number one, Baram amekuja kwa nani kwa Barak akamwambia nataka ukuje uniraanie watu wako hapa Bwana Yesu asifiwe strategy number one is Uh, now I, I don't know whether let me let me stop there for a moment because ninaona nikianzia nitaanzia katikati ambapo pengine inaweza kuchanganya let me say this they create a platform ambao iko na mambo kadhaa ndani yake the wicked world that fights against believers creates a platform from which they operate they work whatever i'll tell you now from here hizi ndizo njia wanatumia lakini they create a platform jina la bwana libarikiwe i want to say this the platform is created basically by doing the following number one, uh, uh, offering or building that means use the words building altars in high places kujenga madhabahu katika mahali pa juu bwana yesu asifiwe sana na nataka kuambia hivi Madhabahu ni kitu cha ajabu kwa sababu inaweza kosa kuwa kitu physical kwa hivyo hutaiona You might never come across the altars ambazo tunaongea but they are there They are usually there and I'll, I'll talk about a few things ambazo zinaweza kuwak ama zinaweza fanywa katika habari hizo but basically when they build altars there are areas ambazo ningetaka uangalia so this is the number one ambao nilikuwa nataka kuzungumzia nikaona nikianza kabla sijaweka hiyo utakosea ama utakosa kushika number one, they sacrifice against the people of god wakisha jenga madhabahu wanaanza kufanya kafara kinyume na watu wa mungu now if you check the, the book that i've given you numbers 22 utagundua ya kwamba eh, mtu huyu aitwaye baram alisema hivi then kama tutaweza kufanya jambo hili fanya hivi twende katika mlima i believe this should be now verse chapter number 
chapter 23 from verse 1 ndipo utafika sasa wamefika amekubaliwa kwenda akajenga madhabahu akasema hivi baraki akamwambia baraki nijengee hapa madhabahu hiyo ni verse 1 madhabahu saba ukaniandalia hapa ngombe wa ume saba na kodoo wa ume saba angalia hiyo symbols ambazo nataka kuongea habari zake because the world of symbolism is the world that the devil uses against the church and the devil is very keen on symbolism because ulimwengu wa rohoni unaelewa habari ya mifano habari ya kitu badala badala ya uchukue huyu mwanaume uue yeye chukua kitu ingine uue badala yake badala ya uchukue mtoto utoe kama kafara chukua kitu ingine utoe kama kafara praise the name of the lord so i, I want to tell you this the realm of the spiritual is a world of symbolism. Ni ulimwengu wa mifano. Ujifundishe hili jambo, Mungu akusaidie. Leo sitaweza kwenda very deep into mifano, lakini kesho ukija utasikia mengi kuhusu mifano ambao nitatoa. So, ninasema hivi wanajifundisha kujenga madhabahu na juu ya madhabahu kitu cha kwanza wanafanya ni nini? Ni ku sacrifice. And every believer should be conscious of these things because they do happen. Jina la Bwana libarikiwe. They do happen. Every now and then they do happen. Wanafanya hiyo mambo ili kufunga, ili kuzuia, ili kuzuilia watu wa Mungu. Na sacrifices nitasema kuna sacrifice aina mbili. Sacrifice ya kwanza ni ile inafanywa eh, nje ya watu wa Mungu. Nje. Nje ni namaanisha kwamba you are not allowed to participate. Nobody will invite you. Nobody will tell you it is going on. Hakuna mtu atakwambia lakini itakuweko. Na hizi vitu Mungu awasaidie. Hivi mmenyamaza I hope amjenyamaza kwa kutoelewa. Nikusikiliza. Mnashika hiyo ninasema. Na mkubuke nimesema inatumia nini? Symbolism. So sacrifice hizi kuna kitu inasimamia. Kuna kitu imerenga. So one of the things ambazo ninasema kuhusu sacrifice. Ni kama vile unaona Baram katika chapter 23 and chapter 24 ya Numbers. Numbers 23 and 24. Alifanya sacrifice inje ya Israeli. Wa Israeli wako kule chini hawajui kuna kafara inafanywa kwa milima. So always in life as a believer you must always remember there are enemies who are fighting you outside your knowledge. There are things that stand against you. There are spirits, there are devils that stand against you outside your knowledge. How do you? Wewe unaendelea na life, how do you? Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Nafikiri for the sake of maybe somebody who might not have been here when I shared there are testimonies ambazo nilishare hapa. One time tulikuwa na kanisa very vibrant. I was living in Meru and uh, Meru North particular tonight I Gembe and I, I was just living there. I was doing a wonderful ministry. We had a wonderful church, vibrant kanisa lenye uwepo wa Mungu, kanisa ambao watu walitoka in 50 something kilometers in those days in the villages. Walikuwa wanatoka matown wanakuja church in the village. The grace of God was evident. Na kumbe nimeguza ulimwengu wa maroho na sijui kwa sababu wakati huo sikuwa na hekima kama niko nayo. It's about 20, 21 years ago. So, sikuwa najua mambo ambayo ninajua, sikuwa nimewahi sikia mtu akifundisha spiritual warfare na wakati nilipata opportunity ya kujua spiritual warfare, eh, kitabu nilipewa cha Rebecca Brown nilirudishia mtu nikamwambia sisomagi vitu kama hizi. Mtu anakaa akisema hapo shetani anga sijui akamwambia shetani akampinga se huyu ndiye akona shida sio shetani. You know mimi nilikuwa nasimama na 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Mambo yote ni mapya. Ya kale yamefanya nini? Sasa mimi auge niwaambia habari ya pepo. Pepo tunaulizana nini naye? Where? Tunaigiliana aje? So kumbe mimi ni mjinga. Sielewi. Siku moja tukata long story short. Nilitoka kwa nyumba. Na nikatoka kwa nyumba tulikuwa na crusade. Na nje ya kanisa, okay tulikuwa tumekodi tu kanyumba. Uh, kwa hivyo ilikuwa nyumba kubwa ilikuwa imejengwa duka we mahali pa getosha watu 250 hivi so uh, upande wa nje kulikuwa na uwanja na ndipo tulikuwa tunafanya crusade so nikaambia vijana waende wategeneze jukua wa, na nikajiambia maana sijaona wacha nitoke nione jukua vile imefanywa so nikatoka 
kutoka nikasikia kelele kelele hizi ni nyimbo sasa nilikuwa nishajua wakati wa tohara e, kule kulikuwa nyuma kiasi miaka hiyo watu walikuwa hata sasa wengine huko bado wanatahiri ile ya kienyeji ile unaepelekwa kwa mtu ama mahali fulani unatahiriwa so nilikuwa nimeshawahi kutana nao mara mbili na wakataka kuniua e, nika escape so nilikuwa na woga lakini nikajiambia si huku ni town hakuna mtu ataniuliza so nikatoka nikaenda na ninasikia wako pande ile kanisa liko so nikatoka kwenda kufika mahali nikawaona wakiwa kama pale na waona wako nje ya kanisa sasa nikajiambia ah wacha niende tu hawa watu si mimi sina jambo na wao hata si kukuzudia kwenda mahali wako lakini wa mama watatu walikuwa watatu wakasimama kwa njia wakaniambia pasta usijaribu kwenda pale Hawa watu watakuua. Sasa mi nikajifanya kichwa gumu unajua nataka kuwatisha kidogo. Ah, wataniua kwa nini? Kwani nimekosea nini? Ah, wacha ni wa mama wakafunga jia kabisa. Wakaniambia huwezi kwenda pale. Hawa watu ni wanyama watakuua. Nikasema okay, sawa wacha mi nipitie hapa basi niende shughuli zingine. Waliponiona wakaimba nyimbo so wakati wao sikuwa na naelewa Kimeru singejua ni nini wanasema. Wakaimba nyimbo ambazo sikusikia ni nini wamesema. So mimi nikatoka nikapita nikaenda kwa familia nyingine e, baadaye wakati nisikia kumetulia nikaja when i came to the church nikaja mpaka kanisani e, mzee mmoja wa kanisa naye alikuwa amekuja nikakuta kwa kila murango wa kanisa kumetahiriwa mtu ilikuwa na mirango mitatu na i'm giving these stories because unajua watu wengine hapa tukiongea habari ya hii mambo kuna mtu anafunga moyo anasema ah hiyo pastor haina nihusu nini by the way tunaulizana nini na shetani sikiza vizuri kwa kila mrango kulitahiriwa sijui kama ni mtu mmoja sijui kama ni wangapi wakatahiri kwa kila mrango sasa sisi tulikuta damu huko nyembe walizotumia vitu zingine hapo so na sisi mimi na yule mzee kwa ujinga maana nawaambia Mungu ni mwema we unasikia haya mambo pengine hujakubana na chochote kwa ujinga wetu kitu tulifanya ni kuchukua takataka zile zilikuwa pale kuosha pale tukaosha wasau mimi nilijifundisha kutoa kitambo kufanya mambo yote ambayo unaweza fanya and again there was nobody else there so tukafagia pale tukaosha tukatupa takataka kwa choo na tukamalizana i want to tell you this from that time kanisa lilikuwa vibrant likaanza kwenda hivi from that time i, I have not noticed lakini nimeona watu wameshikwa na street spirit ni wa, wakazi wa kanisa na wapea kazi wananiambia pastor wacha nipumzike kidogo naambia mwingine wewe basi ongoza ibada sande ananiambia pastor mimi sitaki kuogoza sasa nasikia tu nikae hivyo sijashika chochote bado mwishowe kukatokea hata confusion prophecy za uongo nini zikaleta shida sana kwa kanisa mimi mtu nilikuwa nimekaa miaka hata kabla sijaokoka sijakunywa dawa nikaanza kugojeka magonjwa ambao wakati mwingine nimepelekwa hospitali nimeshikiliwa siwezi tembea nageuka hivi na mwili wote sijashika chochote bado and after a while nimekunywa madawa nimekuja nika, nikaoa kwa hivyo nikaoa tu katika ile hali maisha imeenda gumu kanisa limekaa kama lime stagnate okay watu hawaendi lakini hawakuji impact uliyokuwa nayo imeisha kurusedi ile to, to bring you into attention pale mwanzo vyombo vilichomeka kwa ule uwanja You know wale ambao kama hapa kuna mtu ametoka Igembe ama Tigani ataelewa vile nasema njoli pale na tohara hiyo wewe unaelewa vile kuna kuwa so wapendwa eh, nimegojeka nimefika mahali nikaoa nikazidi kuwa mgonjwa nikakunywa madawa siponi siku moja nikasema kama mtu hukufa wacha nikufe nikachukua dawa zote nikapeleka nikatupa kwa choo na nikaambia mke wangu simezi dawa kama kuna Mungu atanihurumia mimi nimekunywa dawa nikiwa nimekufa anti eh, nimefunga antibiotics we are fasting and i must take the medication nimekunywa hainiyafanyi chochote there is no no side effects but siponi yani maisha imekuwa ngumu nyumba imekuwa ngumu fedha hakuna there is nothing mwishowe wakati nilienda mahali pamoja tulikuwa tunaenda maombi kwa, ma, kwa mapango nikaenda tukaomba mungu akaniambia leave this place and I go to such and such a place. Huo dio wakati nilihama Meru nikaenda Ruiru. So nikakaa 10 years after ndio Mungu siku moja alikuja kwangu. 
akaniuliza nilipokuambia utoke Meru did you understand why nikamwambia sijui akaniambia because unaweza kumbuka siku hiyo ulipopita baada ya kufagia ulipopita unakumbuka mzee fulani ulikuta amesimama mahali na alikuuliza swali moja mara tatu aliniuliza huyu mzee aliponiona alikuwa anaitwa Ntwarimba alikufa uh, akaniuliza pasta uko hai nikamwambia sidio unajua nilifikiri labda ni mchezo tu anacheza ama kitu akaniuliza pasta uko hai he nikamwambia e, niko sawa akaniuliza mara ya tatu pasta kweli uko hai nikamwambia bu mzee keti nieleze vile unataka kusema akaniambia watu wale hawaimbi zile nyimbo unless ukawa wamekuua Mungu akaniambia niliona haujui haukuelewa ulichoambiwa ibada na kafara ilifanywa to kill you So I lived eight good years in a grave spiritual grave which I didn't understand Kaburi ya kiroho umezikwa maisha yangu nikaanza kuona inadidimia vitu nilikuwa nafanya kwa urahisi naona vimedidimia maisha yangu huduma nini nasikia mtu mudhaifu mwili ukawa mnyonge maisha ikawa ngumu kumbe kaburi ilichimbwa na nikazikwa na pale ni kweli palikuwa na kile kitu kimefanywa i'm trying to teach you the world of symbolism so my friend nikisema pigana kunaweza fanywa kitu haujui wewe hauna habari watu wamekusanyika kwa milima wametoa kafara wengine kumbuka hivi umetoka katika familia za ajabu zilizo na ibada kama hizi zilizo na vituko kama hivyo wanakusanyika wanajifunga wanatoa kafara wanachinja buzi na dio huwa nasema kama familia yenu ina tabia ya kukula buzi sijui kufanya kasherehe hapo ka December sijui sisi tunakutana mwezi wa ine, hata wengine unakuta wanafanya iwe coincide na wakati fulani yalikufa wakati mama yetu alikufa wazima hiyo siku tu tunakutana ama hiyo weekend kukubuka vile mama alikufa na tunakula pamoja tunajiweka pamoja please be my dear sio kila sherehe unakwenda kupeleka tumbo kwako kwa hakuna nyama wengine ile nyama umekula hata inatosha unapaswa uanze kukula greens peke yake bwana asifiwe sana lakini umeenda kukula because you don't understand you don't know why mimi husema kitu hata katika familia hata kama kilianzishwa na babu wa babu kama hauelewi ni ya nini wachana naye wacha watu wa kufanya adui kuna haja gani nijiue nikiwa ninaona twende tukajizike waluia mko hapa eh hey, kwa nevero msalaba ndio we huyo na, na kuna mtu ametumwa sijui akashike hiyo roho alete ili itulie na wewe ndio huyo umeenda mkakule dume aliyechijua kwa kaburi ya marehemu na you are there ukinofu kuminofu kurarua kurarua unarua mpaka unakongea mwingine supu ni yani ushiki are you hearing what i'm saying these things are real they happen here ama hapa kuna muluya eh hey, uh, na steve bwana sfe iko hiyo kitu ufanywa kukusanya roho hata wa malwa simuliendea london muka mukarudisha kenya ati roho iliachwa london ati na randa randa sasa lazima iendewe ikuje iambiwe ifanya nini itulie ili itulie kuna chinjwa dume kwa kaburi ni ukweli alafu wewe ndiye huyo uko hapo he na kwa sababu iko pasta mnaimba he mlinda wanje <laughs> unakula pepo zinaanza kuingia kwako moja kwa moja mrango umefuguka kwa sababu huelewi kafara ni moja ya vitu kila mkristo unapaswa ujue kupigana nazo maana hufanywa na ninasema zingine hauju haujui hauelewi kuna watu tumejaribu kufuata mtu alibackslide wakati gani wakati walienda sherehe fulani kwao wakakura baada ya hiyo sherehe tamaa zake zikainuka kama moto wa nyasi haushikiki na nikukura tu kafara sawa hakujua amen wapendwa mungu awasaidie uelewe na ndio maana huwa tunasema na i don't want to create a, an environment of suspicion eh? una suspect kila kitu vitu zingine unachukua tu na unajua lakini ni vizuri kujiuliza vitu maswali 
mwanaume anaweza kukuletea nguo aje wewe na si bibi yake amekuletea umechukua haraka haraka na kusema oh my unaikira kwa oh my god kutoka hapo unakuwa kama kama roho ya Jezebeli na ya nani eh huyo mwingine na ya Rahab maraya imekuingia haushikiki ukikutana na yote akikwambia tupige kona unamtagulia unamwambia tuende hivi najua mahali watu huingia na si kupenda ni kitu kimefanywa umepewa vitu ambazo nitakufundisha vinaitwa family object kwanza uonyeshe Mungu njia yako ya kutamani kutubu na ili ya kusaidia tuinue mikono yetu mbele za Bwana kila mmoja uingie katika kujipigania kama kuna dhambi ya kutubu ama jambo linalokuhukumu katika maisha sio lazima iwe hiyo nimetaja jambo linakuhukumu now everybody ingia katika spiritual realm nimekwambia hiyo haina distance tangazia kafara kila mabaram kila makuhani wa gizani ambao wamejenga madhabahu kinyume cha maisha yako kinyume cha familia yako kinyume cha biashara yako anza kuangusha katika jina la Yesu Kristo Let us let us not be ignorant. Israeli wamekaa kule chini na kuna mtu anawaroga kule kwa milima. Sisi hatutatulia, hatutanyamaza, hatutajifanya, hatutajifanya kwamba tu, hatujui tunajua. Stop.